Um, all right. So uh, you just heard a little bit about me. My name is Jen Lampton. I'll give you a little uh, longer story. Um, I started building websites back in 2006 in, with Drupal. Um, started building websites in 1997, a lot longer than that. Um, but when I first started building sites with Drupal, I was a site builder. I just wanted to click all the blocks together and have it turn into a beautiful tool for my clients to use. Um, and so I like to approach how I build websites today with that same kind of perspective of, are the tools I'm using as a developer friendly enough for site builders? So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, why that leads me to love panels as much as I do. Uh, I started uh, helping the local Drupal community in <coughs> Berkeley and the San Francisco Bay Area in about 2007, which was the year we had our first Bay Area Drupal camp. I'm now the lead organizer for the Bay Area Drupal camp, along with a lot of other really great community members who help put on this camp every year for free, which is pretty cool. And in 2010, I was also one of the organizers for DrupalCon San Francisco that was uh, held in the Bay Area as well. Um, I've been writing modules for Drupal since about 2008. I stumbled across some need one of my client had where a module didn't exist, and I was like, I'm not really sure if I can do this, but I guess I've got to try it, because they need it anyway. And it turns out it was really easy. Um, and I kind of had really high expectations for what a module developer for Drupal was. Um, and when I started mucking around in the code and realized that all, all you had to do was write a couple of functions in the right way, and you could make Drupal do exactly what you wanted to, I kind of fell in love. So uh, in 2010, right after we held DrupalCon San Francisco, we had our first training day in association with the DrupalCon, and we trained over 500 people. And all of a sudden it became clear that Drupal needed training. There was this huge market for all of these people who wanted to learn Drupal and needed help. And so uh, I was working for Chapter 3 at the time, and they decided to start a training division. And um, I started writing a bunch of training materials on Drupal. So how do you teach people how to use Drupal? Um, and we were mostly trying to train site builders. We wanted to train the people who are going to be using Drupal to build websites, as opposed to launch developers and theme developers that we focused on later. But initially, um, I started writing a bunch of training also on panels, because I wanted more people to know how to use panels. Um, in 2011, I had spent a year training people on how to use Drupal, and I felt that most of the time I was pointing at Drupal saying, we know that this doesn't make any sense, and uh, at some point we're going to fix it. And I felt like I could have been one of those people who was fixing it. So I got myself involved with a usability team, and we did a bunch of usability tests, both at the University of Minnesota, and then later um, in early 2012 at the Google Usability Lab to try and figure out what it was about using Drupal that was quite so hard and making some changes in how we named things, how we organized things, that just made site builders have a much easier time working with Drupal. And shortly after that, uh, we realized that not only is using Drupal from a site builder perspective really hard, but trying to teach people how to theme for Drupal, particularly Drupal 7, was way too hard. And so I started focusing not only on uh, what I we call usability, but also something I call learnability, which is trying to make Drupal easier for people to learn. And a big part of that, to me, was replacing our theme layer with something that made a lot more sense to people. Um, so now I'm involved with trying to get Twig in for Drupal 8. So um, I'm obviously very heavily invested in this Drupal business. Uh, I really love it. I think that what I do every day is a lot of fun. I get to wake up and play with toys, basically, uh, all day long, and then deliver products to clients who need them. And I feel like that's a really good place for me to be. Um, every single website I build, I put panels on. That doesn't mean you need panels on every single website that's out there, but I find a use for it and a benefit for doing that. So uh, panels is also my favorite module in all of Drupal. So now that you know a little bit about me, I wanna try and take a poll and try and figure who's in the room. Um, just so I've got a couple of examples at the end, I need to know how technical I should get with them. So of the people in the room, can we get a show of hands? Um, how many of you have been building Drupal websites for less than a year? So I'm assuming most of you are all working in Drupal 7. Okay, um, so how many people have you been, have been building websites for more than a year? Okay, um, how many of you also built websites in Drupal 6? Okay. And so what I'm going to try and do is, is um, it's a little bit easier to relate some of what Panels is trying to get you to uh, think about to how we used to do things in the past. Um, things did not change very much from in a temp um, layout perspective between Drupal 6 and Drupal 7. Uh, I, I actually think they got worse. Um, so Panels is pretty much the same between Drupal 6 and Drupal 7, solves all the same problems in a lot of the same ways. 
Um, so we'll, we'll do some comparisons between the two of those two. So originally, this is like flashback to how Drupal got into the problem that it's in now with layouts. Um, Drupal assumed that every website made in Drupal would use exactly the same layout. And that would be sidebar on the left, sidebar on the right, content in the middle. And back in 2001, this was really great because everybody had websites that had lots of content that were going to use this kind of format and it was trendy and whatever and that's fine. Um, but uh, there's a couple of, of problems with this. Um, for starters, this assumes that the content for any given page is always going to be in the middle of the page. Um, and the way the templating system works is it actually treats the content as like a single variable. It just prints it out. Um, it also assumes that the stuff stuff that goes around it, this is what Drupal calls blocks, um, is always not really going to have anything to do with your content. So that when Drupal renders a page, it puts out the content and then it sticks a bunch of stuff around the outside. And as that stuff is being prepared, it doesn't have any idea what's going on in the middle of the page. So the stuff has no clue as to what's next to it, which makes it really hard for you to make your content relevant to each other on different parts of the same page. So. That was a happy for a little while. We're like, okay, that's fine. We can print, make websites like that. And there are a lot of websites on the web today that still work like this, and they're perfectly fine. Um, but there are some people who want it to do something different. Um, a lot of people need different layouts for different pages. Uh, homepage is something really common. Everybody's like, I don't want my homepage to have exactly the same layout as every other page on my site. It's different. It's special. It needs more attention. So uh, we're like, okay, well, we can give you some tools for your blocks to control where they appear. You can decide, okay, this page should, or this block should or should not appear on the homepage. You can say this block should or should not appear for a specific user role. Or, hey, here's a box where you can throw in some PHP code. That's a good solution, right? Um, we decided to make the one layout that Drupal comes with flexible. So we're like, okay, if you tell all of the blocks in the right sidebar not to appear, that page can just adjust and say, hey, there's no sidebar, I'm wider. Guess what, I'm a two column layout, ha ha. But it's not, it's really a three column layout just with nothing in that column. Um, well, that's fine until you have like 18 blocks in your right sidebar and you add a new page that doesn't want a right sidebar and you're like, oh, well now I've got to add 18 block configurations that they don't show on this page, don't show on this page, don't show on this page, don't show. And after about the fifth time, you're like, screw this, I need a better solution. All right, so let's look at our template files. We've got code, we can change the code. Let's just go into the template file and create a special one just for some specific page. For example, here's a, a home page and say, let's just not print the sidebar, right? No sidebar on this page, no problem. Well, actually that's problematic too because even if you're not printing the content to the page, Drupal still goes into the database, retrieves all the content, wraps it in Steam functions, sticks it together, and then just doesn't do anything with it. So you've wasted all of this time where Drupal's gathering information and getting it ready for display and then just not displaying it at the end. So, okay, that's not good enough either. Um, we also ran into some crazy problems with the user interface on the blocks page where um, what if you want some block to appear uh, on the left sidebar on the home page, on the right sidebar on a sub page? You can't. It's either in one region or it's not. You can't have it in two regions with conditions. But guess what? We're uh, running out of time to solve this problem and we've got to ship Drupal 7. So that was Drupal 6 land, right? We're now moving to Drupal 7. So what are we going to do to let people have more flexibility in how we deal with this in core? We can add a crazier starting layout. So we changed our default from uh, Garland, which is our previous theme, to Bartik. And Bartik has lots and lots and lots of regions. Um, and this is great because it gives you a lot of flexibility. You can say, oh, well, on one page we're going to use this triptych region, and on another page we can use the like four column footer region, and then it's kind of different. You can like put, it's like a different layout, only it's still one layout. You're just putting stuff places and not. And it came with some other problems. Uh, now where we have this giant drop down of like, what region do you want this content to go in? People look at that and they're like, what? I don't know where these are. What the hell is a triptych, right? Um, there's just stuff in here that it, it cluttered up our user interface and didn't actually solve the problems we wanted to solve. Um, one of the problems here is that our content is still just one giant content variable in the middle of your page. So that didn't get solved either. So what is the solution? Well, as it turns out, there are five ways to solve every problem in Drupal. You've probably all discovered that already. Um, the solution that I love more than any other is panels. 
Um, so panels lets you control layouts. That's the, the big thing. There's a lot of other stuff that it does that we'll talk about too. Um, but layouts is a, is a big win and the, the easiest place to jump into it. Um, it requires that you change the way you think about the architecture of your site. Oh, and there's a couple of different ways you can use panels. Um, there's kind of what I call the half-in way, which is where you still kind of use blocks and regions, and then there's the all-in way, where you just like screw blocks, turn off the blocks module, just jump in and use panels. Um, and it's, it's a different way of thinking about stuff. So I'll walk you through how we're going to do that today. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you have to think about controlling the layout of your site like whether you have sidebars or not, whether you have a triptych or whether you have a footer or a header. Um, instead of thinking about that as a layout in which your content is placed, you're thinking about all of that stuff as your content now. So if you take the Garland model here where you ha used to have a header and a footer and a left and right sidebar and content in the middle, Panels lets you take control of that content area and say, okay, where this used to be one giant block of content, one huge column with you know your field order letting you control how it appears. Um, now we're going to split it into different areas. In this case, it's going to be two columns. Well, what if you wanted your site to have a two column layout instead of your content to have a two column layout? You just don't have sidebars. And now your content is your site. And so you've got everything in two columns. Um, same thing with the three column layout, right? This is a layout very similar to what Garland's trying to do. You want to rebuild Garland with panels. You build that same layout in your content area, and then you don't have sidebars. So what we're doing is removing the stuff that Blocks does with your layouts and your regions and replacing it with panels. And we'll walk through a couple of examples of how you can actually do this later on. So this changes the way you're fundamentally building your websites now. It means that you don't need very many regions in your theme. Your theme becomes look and feel, style, font, color. It doesn't dictate where your content goes. And this is really hard for some people because front-end developers want to build layouts. And you can still do that with panels. You can do it in your theme. I don't recommend it. Um, the reason I like to separate the idea of layouts from the idea of a theme is because if I change my theme, I don't want my site to break. I feel like a theme should be a skin. You should be able to stick any theme on any site and it should skin it and it should be fine and it shouldn't explode when you change your theme. And so I like to think of layouts as separate. So you can have a layout and you can have a theme and you can mix and match them. So panels is in charge of your layouts. Your theme is in charge of what those things look like. And you can add styles within panels and we'll talk about that a little later too. Another thing you can do is, uh, or think about, is that you're not really going to be doing anything with blocks anymore. My big saying is blocks are dumb. They don't really know anything about what's going on around them, so why use them? It turns out that if you use panels, panels gives you access to all of the blocks that every module that you're using provides. So if you want to use a block, that's fine. You can use it in panels. If you don't use it in blocks, you're not going to use the blocks UI. And uh, Matt, I'm not sure if he's in here or not, wrote a patch against Core that allowed you to turn off the block module in Drupal 7. So if you don't want to use blocks, you don't have to. You just turn it off. You're fine. You can use them in panels. And then the last thing that's, that's the biggest thing is that everything is content, right? It's not just that thing in the middle of your page. Everything on every page is content. And one of the things that we learned in doing our usability tests uh, two years ago now is that this is the way most people think about a page anyway. Users don't think, oh, a block is an administrative tool, but a node is content, right? But that's how Drupal has trained us to think. And so for the longest time, we didn't understand that this was a conceptual problem for people. But now it turns out everything is content. So in panels, a block is content, a uh, node is content, a user is content, a little piece of text you drop in there is content. Everything is content. You can put every piece of content wherever you want inside your layout. So it's, a, it's just kind of a fundamental change in how you think about building your website. But it turns out it's like a lot more true to how you would naturally think and a little less true to how Drupal people think, which I think is good, but different. All right, so I'm going to show you a couple of pages in Drupal um, that Drupal does. Drupal does things for you, right? Yay, it makes it really easy because most of stuff is already done. Um, but I don't think it does things very well. It just kind of does them. And so what I like to do is go through all of the stuff that Drupal normally does and make it a little bit better. And you can do that by using panels and all of the suite of modules that goes along with that, which I'll talk about. So the first thing that, uh, or here's the list of th the pages that we're going to build. Um, we're going to build a custom home page. This is the first place people usually find a need for panels as they want to make their home page different. So it's a really good example to start with. Uh, we're going to change the layout of the home page. We're going to change the layout of two different node pages. We're going to show you how we can make patterns that will apply to different types of nodes. 
Uh, we're going to talk about the user profile page. This is the page Drupal does really badly out of the box. It's like, you've been here for two years. Oh, yeah. That's what I want to know about all my users. Um, so we're going to replace that with some better displays of user information. Um, we're going to go over the taxonomy term page. Uh, out of the box, the home page and the taxonomy page are really similar in Drupal. It's just what, what I call a river of news, right? Where it's like, post, 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 which is fine if you're writing a blog. But most people using Drupal these days are not just writing a blog. If you're just writing a blog, you would use WordPress, but you're not. You're building a website, and it does more stuff, and you want the page to look different. So we're going to replace those two pages with some examples of um, how, how you can leverage panels and views, and uh, views custom content panes to make those better too. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about custom landing pages. Um, so you can build your own custom layouts. We'll talk about that too, and how to uh, manipulate them even from a kind of a, a editorial experience as opposed to an administrative experience. And I have a bunch of code I can show you too at the end. We'll see how much time there's left. So you can add your own stuff to panels too. So um, I'm going to start with wireframes. Uh, I don't know what your, your usual development process is like. I usually run into uh, two different processes. Number one is uh, I'll get a finished design. I'm not a designer, no design skill whatsoever. So some fabulous designer will hand me something beautiful and say, make Drupal look like this. And then it's a matter of deconstructing that design into its component parts. And you're like, this is a node, and this is a view, and this is, I don't know what that is. I'll build it later, right? Um, or if the design is a long, painful process, and they're working with the client to like go through iterations or whatever, sometimes they just give you the wireframes. They're like, they signed off on the wireframes. You start building this. So this is the process that I'm going through now, where we've got a bunch of wireframes, and we're just going to build this in a wireframe. No theme, right? We're going to use Bartik or whatever is on there already. It just make Drupal do these things, and then later on, when designs get approved, you can stick a theme on it, and it'll be fine. So here's a home page. Uh, we have a fancy rotator thingy at the top. We have a left-hand side article, which is going to be an article node, and we have a right-hand side article, uh, which is also just a node. So a very simple home page. But you'll notice that this layout is something, even though it looks really simple, is something that's really hard to do from here. Right? This is our Bartik base, whatever. So how would you turn this into a standard two-column layout with a giant thing on top? It's hard, right? And you think, well, it's a really simple layout. Surely I can like use maybe maybe like the left sidebar and the right sidebar with nothing in the middle. Oh no, we can't do that. Can't have a page with no content. Um, yeah, so it's hard. So we're gonna start there. A uh, very simple example of using panels. So there's two ways that you can access panels in Drupal. Um, there is a uh, panels dashboard that lets you manage all of your panels right from here, uh, which is fairly straightforward. There's some some handy stuff on here, but I never use this page. I actually deal with all of my panels through Page Manager, which is a requirement. And this will show you all of the uh, pages on your Drupal site. So page, this is one of my favorite words. What, what is a page, really? I mean, it's a content type. It's a view mode. It's a uh, views display. It's a, I don't know, it could be whatever you want. It's one of these words that we use all the time in Drupal, right? We've now added a page manager module, which lets you manage your pages. It's a different kind of page. This is a page that actually has to be like a path with some kind of context associated with it. And what you're seeing now is a list of all of these pages that come by default in Drupal. They're all currently gray because the page manager module provides you a way to override what Drupal does by default. And Panels Page Manager, in particular, is very heavy-handed about how it deals with its display of your content. It basically says, Drupal, I don't care what you're trying to do. I'm throwing it out. We're doing it my way. So if you want like a little bit of what Drupal does and a little bit what panels does, you've got to kind of be careful about how those mix together. So what we're going to do here is start by adding a custom page. Hence this link here at the top, add custom page. We're going to give it a title, administrative description. We're going to give it a path. Um, and then there's a handy little checkbox here that says, make this site your home page. So guess what? Most people start using panels because they want a custom home page. There's a checkbox here to do it. Does anyone have any guess what this checkbox might actually be doing on the back end? Right, so there's a setting under like site configuration somewhere that says, what's your home page, right? And then if you were going to build it some other way, you'd have to like go in there and type in like home and then hit save. Well, panels is like, let's just do that for you. So there's a little checkbox here that does that same thing. Um, we're going to come back to what some of these other things are here a little later for now. Um, on this page, I'm just going to tell it to make it my home page and click continue. 
And right now what we're doing is walking through a wizard. So this is like this nice, friendly, simplified interface to kind of get you into a panel. Kind of like views, like when you first build a view, it's like, what do you want to see a list of? How do you want to see it? And you click save and it's like, bam, airplane dashboard. Panels is exactly the same thing as we're doing now. Okay, so um, category, this we'll come back to later. Uh, it always starts at builders. Most of the time you do not want a builder's layout. What that means is it's a flexible layout you're gonna build yourself. Um, this is good for rapid prototyping and we'll walk through it in a minute, but most of the time that's not what we want. Uh, so instead I'm gonna look at the list of two column layouts that are available here. It comes with a bunch of like, these are common layouts, choose from here. Uh, you'll notice when you start trying to build your own panels that usually the layouts your designers have like carefully thought out and handed to you aren't in this list. Uh, you can add your own and I've got some code at the end I can show you on how to do that too. So I'm gonna choose this two column stack layout because it looks an awful lot like my wireframe. And we're going to click continue and go to the next step. So now we're configuring panel settings. Um, most of the time, I don't have sidebars in my theme and I don't have any blocks positioned anywhere other than like the main content block. Um, and that means that I can kind of ignore this checkbox. But if you're doing the half in version with panels where you're like, sometimes I want blocks in my sidebar and sometimes I want a page that doesn't have anything, there's this little checkbox that lets you turn off that blocks and regions business. So for example, if you have an existing site and this is your first dabble into panels and you want a panels homepage, you can just check this box and on your homepage you won't have sidebars and it'll work exactly how you want. Um, for the example I'm doing now, I'm not ever gonna have sidebars so I'm just gonna ignore that checkbox. So um, there's also like some interfaces in here for adding CSS. I don't think it's a good idea to put code in user interfaces so I try to avoid that as much as possible but if you need to add like a unique identifier on here or something, you can, it's there. People like that. Um, all right, so now, uh, I guess you can see it pretty well over there. Um, you get kind of a wireframe of what your page is gonna look like, where it's like, hey, content goes in here. And it looks kind of close to what we want, which is pretty good. So I'm gonna uh, fill some stuff out here. Let's say it's like a welcome. Put a little title on it. The top, we're gonna add a fancy rotator thingy, which I've created before. It's just a views slideshow, no big deal. Um, on the left-hand side, we're gonna add a node. So when you add things in, in panels, there's like a little cog wheel at the top of every region where you can drop stuff in. So you can drop in uh, content by clicking on the cog wheel and clicking add content. Guess what, in panels everything's content, doesn't matter what you're adding. Um, and then there's categories on the left hand side that dictate where this content is coming from. So this is like a, a smarter take on blocks where in blocks everything's just in one giant list. Panels tries to divide those blocks into different categories like activity, these are like blocks added by the user module and Menus are like, these are blocks added by the menu module, so you can actually find stuff a little bit more easily. If you have a giant site with lots of modules adding lots of blocks, it's really hard to find your blocks in the blocks list. So Panels is trying to make it a little bit easier. Um, I've added my own category here called Gen Stuff. I did this through the Views interface. If you guys have questions about how to do Views configuration for Panels at the end, I can show you a lot about that, but I'm worried about running out of time. So just say, hey look, Jen added a thing, that's cool. Um, it also gives you the option here to add existing content. So if I just want to add one node, I can click on this existing node option and it says, hey, enter the title or the NID of that node that you want to add. So it'll say, okay, let's see if I have a node that starts with A, we'll add that one. And then it gives you a bunch of options on how you want this node to actually appear. So if uh, the title of this node is different than I want it to actually appear, I could override that. Um, you can link the node title to its node. So for example, if I'm only gonna display a teaser here and I want people to get to the rest of the content, you can do that. It gives you an option to include or exclude those node links that usually print out at the bottom. I'll leave those too. Um, and then if you wanted to use a specific template file to render this node, this is like a theme hook suggestion, you can type it right in here. And Panels will use that to render your node too. Um, again, I tend to let, like to let Drupal do as much as it can by default, um, but people really like changing stuff here, so you can do that. Um, and there's also a drop down here for your build mode. So if you added your own custom build modes and you wanted a front page view of your node, you can, you can do that too. I'm gonna leave this as teaser and click finish. So we can do the same thing on the right hand side if we wanted to add another node. Um, instead, I'm gonna add some custom content. This is panel's equivalent of a block. So it gives you an administrative title. So if you wanted this to be different from the actual title, you can. Um, and then title, make it some uh, dummy ellipsum, 
And then uh, the way panels content panes work is you have the option of making them individual or reusable. So if this is a piece of content that will only ever appear on the home page, and I want it to be some like, welcome to my website, thank you for coming to visit, it's not important and I don't want it indexed and it's just some little bit of content, I can just click finish and this will embed itself right into this page and only exist right there. But if I want this piece of content to maybe also appear on my landing pages, like maybe it's a promotion for some feature that exists in my company for a little while, um, I can click this little checkbox, uh, this also is provided by a different module that comes with panels called Custom Content Panes. Um, and this will let me save this block, it's called a content pane, um, for later. So I can call this, um, so this category box right here is asking me which category on the uh, page where we choose content this will fit under. So I, I'll show you this in a minute, but if I call this something like um, smart stuff, we'll see that in a minute. Okay, so I've created a smart block, I've added some uh, standard node on the left hand side and my slideshow at the top. So something is a little confusing, I just clicked the finish button, but I'm not actually finished. Um, panels is a lot like views where it's got that two stage save where you can click update, 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 and then when you're done with all of your updates you click save. It's the same thing with panels where you've got to update, 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 and save, only uh, occasionally you also have this update and save button, but you don't have it when you click finish. It's confusing, so we'll fix that. But um, you click finish, and then you're not finished, and then you click save, and then you're finished. All right, so now if I go and look at my home page, I should have uh, rotator at the top, which will rotate if I'm not on it, and then a node on the left and a piece of content on the right. So one thing you'll notice is that right now I have a block in my sidebar, right, the old school Drupal block, Drupal sidebar, and it's messing up my layout, right? So there's two ways I can solve this problem. One of them is just take the block out of the sidebar. The other one is that checkbox on the panels page that says disable Drupal blocks and regions. So if I go back to pages, and we edit the home page, I think it's under general, disable Drupal box and regions, click update and save, and go home. Now it's gone. Yay! Okay, I thought it was exciting. Um, so this is one of those things where if you have a need for regions that are already built all over the site, you've already got blocks on them, and you want one panels page, you can use that. I don't actually recommend doing that because what this is still doing is going into the database and getting your block and wrapping it in your theme function and getting it ready for the page and the panels go, screw you, I'm doing my own thing, we're not printing this block and then all of that time is wasted. Um, and that's just kind of how the block system works. So we're gonna ignore the block system entirely, turn it off if you want um, and just use panels. So I'm going back to blocks. Um, in this case, I will just remove my main menu from the first sidebar and then every other page I build will not have a sidebar unless the layout I choose in panels has a sidebar, in which case I can put that stuff in. So we can talk about that later too. All right, so now we have a home page that has a fancy rotator, it's kind of going really fast, but um, and the content I wanted on the page. Let's do another page, shall we? That doesn't seem so scary. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is uh, configure a blog page. Um, and what we have here is a blog post on the left-hand side, and we're going to put some information about the blog author on the right-hand side. So this is something where if you had uh, your standard Drupal block system, you'd say, okay, blog post in the content area, no problem. Go and configure every block on my site not to appear in the left sidebar. Now the left sidebar is gone. Now I need to go and add something to the right-hand sidebar that will be some kind of blogger profile information. So you can either um, write a custom module and put in your own hook that like builds whatever this is and there's a block there and you can add that. Or you could try and figure out uh, what combination of other modules would let you turn a node into a block and then you can put that in your sidebar. Or you can try and figure out how to like stick a whole bunch of individual fields in there. But the biggest problem is that the content that's in that sidebar doesn't really know anything about the content that's next to it. So how do you make sure you get the right author for your node? Um, and there's some ways you can do this by like checking the URL string and pulling out the ID that comes after node and then loading the node and then pulling off the author information and loading it. It's just like, it's kind of a mess. But Drupal already knows who wrote that node. It loaded that node. It has all that data. Why can't it just tell the sidebar next to it that's who it is? And that's what panels does. That's the concept of context. Um, 
This is another word like page where we use it to mean lots of different things. There's a module called context. It's solving the same problem. Um, Drupal knows stuff it's not telling you about. There's stuff going on in the page. It knows who you are. Who's looking at this page? Do I know your user information or are you logged out? It knows the content that it just loaded. It knows information about the user who wrote the content that it just loaded. It's just not printing all that stuff out on the page. And so most websites are trying to be smart and dynamic and the stuff on the page knows what else is on the page. Um, but it's just really hard to get Drupal to do that in blocks. So panels are a little bit smarter. All of their content panes know what's going on in the rest of the panel and they can talk to each other. So we're going to build this page now by using the node context that's provided by the page manager module to put all the stuff about the node on the page. All right. Structure pages. So you'll notice that one of the um, grayed out options here is node percent node. Uh, this is a panels kind of token thing that's saying there's going to be a path, node slash one, node slash two, node slash whatever. And whenever that percent node thing is, that's the thing in the URL string that panels will use to build its context. And in this case, it's a node context. Um, you can use these too. You can add these contexts to anything you want. So for example, in this case, there's a node percent node. Um, that's the view of the node. You'll notice there's another one here that's a node percent node edit. That's the edit form for the node. So if you wanted to provide a layout for your node view that exactly matched the layout for your node edit, you can do that. You can leverage both of these things. If you're using some kind of module like web form, where the path is node percent node slash web form, or something like that, you can do that too with panels. You can just say, hey, here's the node we're going to use, and I'm going to use this layout on my web form. So you can leverage these things too. And w we can talk about this more at the end if, if people start getting all glazed over and don't want to talk about it now. Um, but uh, panels provide these for you by default. So you don't have to understand what that crazy context is. You can just use it. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, for one of these ones that's provided, you've got to enable it or it won't work. So this is uh, in, now this interface has changed where the first time you click this button it always says enable, so it's a little bit more helpful. But if you ever find yourself editing one and you're looking at a node and you don't see it actually doing what you thought it was supposed to be doing, make sure it's enabled. Because it's really easy to build something while it's disabled and never actually realize that your code is working. Um, so when it's enabled, it turns black. So that's a helpful. Um, and then we're going to click edit. So we have enabled this thing. But it still isn't actually doing anything because we haven't added what panels calls a variant. Um, so this is another one of these crazy panels terminology words that means a variation on the same thing. So you can have one version of a node display that works for a blog node and another version of a node display that works on an event node. And that's what we're going to build. Um, but you can also have something like a page node that isn't affected by panels at all and it'll fall right through. So the default behavior here for panels is to say, um, I'm going to do nothing until you want me to n tell me what to do. So we've enabled it, but it's still doing nothing because I haven't told it what to do. So we're going to start by adding a variant here, which will use this context. So we're going to click Add Variant. And there's a couple different ways to do that, but I like this tab at the top. And we're going to give it a title. And this first title here is a, a sanity thing for you after you've added a bunch of variants. You're going to need to know how to tell them apart. When you first just add one, it'll say something like Panel, which isn't very useful. Um, so just think about what you want to call this. Um, in this case, we're building a variant for a blog type node. So I'm going to call this blog. Um, there's only one option, or well, I guess we're only going to use panel for variant type, but you can do other st stuff. Like um, if you had some blog where only the blog posts were publicly available and every other content type required a login, you can like put a response code on there to do an access denied message and crazy stuff like that. But we won't do that today. All right, so the next thing we're going to add here is a selection criteria. So if I don't add any selection rules, this would fire for every single node on my site. But I don't want that to happen. I want it to only fire for blog nodes. So I'm going to choose this option. And in the next step, when I click Create Variant, it'll ask me what the selection criteria are. So this is very similar to using context or rules or anything else where it's there's conditions that you're adding. When should my thing I'm configuring actually happen? Um, so here we're just going to add a check for node type. So I'm going to click node type, add, and then say when it's a blog, I want this variant to be used. And click save. It also gives you options to say like, you know, do it when it's not a blog, however you want to handle it. So we've added a, a, a node type variant for when it's a blog entry. We're going to click continue. And now it goes back into that standard 
uh, wizard thing, what, ca what category of layout do you want? Um, I think it was a two-column layout. Oh, but looky here. So the layout we're trying to build is like 60-30, right, in this split. But if you look at the layouts that are provided under two columns, we don't have a 60-30 option. So now we can actually go back to that builder's category and build our own. They're like, well, you know, I just need to show this to the client and make sure it's actually what they wanted. So I'm just going to build this really quickly right in panels. So again, we don't need to disable blue, Drupal box and regions because we've already turned off that block. So the first thing we get to when we get to this wireframe is kind of an empty wireframe that's like we are, we're going to give you one area we're going to call sensor. But there's a little button here that says show layout designer. And this is what lets us build our own layouts. So this is a little bit confusing because there's a lot of different elements. You kind of can think about it like an HTML table. Don't worry, it won't print an HTML table. But um, that, uh, that's how I like to kind of try and figure out where I'm adding stuff. Um, and in this case, I really just want to add one column. It's going to be like a, a sidebar um, on the right. So under the canvas option, which is the outermost container here, there's an option to add a column on the right. And so you can add a class there if you want. But if you just le let it be fluid and click Save, Panels gives you this handy little like, ooh, I can drag it to whatever percentage I want, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to make it like 66, maybe, close enough. Um, and I've got a 60, 40-ish, maybe, close enough uh, layout. And then in the column on the left-hand side, I need to add a row, because again, think about it like a table. A table has a row and a column. And then inside that row, I'm going to add a region. So this is equivalent to the regions from your template files that you're used to working with. The region is the only thing that absolutely requires a title. I'm going to call it right sidebar. And so now I've got a sort of a layout here I can work with. And if I click uh, Create Variant, it'll give me a wireframe that looks like the layout that I just built. So a really easy way to just drop stuff into whatever you want. So now uh, I can go ahead and add my content. Um, on the left-hand side, I'm going to add the node that I'm looking at. So when I go and click this Add Content cogwheel that we've been using before, you'll notice that there is a new category on the left-hand side called Node. This is only there because the node context is available to us in this page. Um, this is something that Drupal's added for us. We're using the default node percent node thing. It has the node context there. If you wanted to do another one of these things for yourself, you'd need to add node as a context to the thing, and then node will appear in the left-hand side. So under node, um, there's a bunch of stuff in here that you can use. You can use uh, node content, which is what I'm going to use. And this just renders your node like it would normally render. It lets you choose a view mode and just drop it in. But if you wanted to do something like pull out individual fields and display them differently, you also have the ability to do that here. And this interface is smart enough to know that I have already limited the node type to blog. So it's only going to show me the fields that are on the blog node type. So it's kind of, you know, panels knows this is a lot. This is a, another crazy interface that Earl Miles has invented to do absolutely anything you could possibly imagine and that makes it hard to use. So it's trying to kind of thin out some of the options that are not anything that there shouldn't be anything on there that's going to break anything. Um, so I'm going to use node content and just drop in my entire blog node on the left-hand side. It gives me some options, like, which node do you want to see? Well, I want to see the node that I'm looking at. But if you had added some kind of relationship, like uh, if you had a node reference field or an entity reference field, you could choose to show the node that this node references instead of the node you're looking at. It's getting all complicated, but crazy stuff you can do. Um, I'm not going to link the title to the node because I'm looking at the node, so just link to itself, which is a little silly. Um, I'm going to include the links and um, no extras is a little uh, confusing. Right here it has um, some uh, information that's actually wrong. I like to think of no extras as showing stuff like comments. Um, it says here like CCK fields, but that's obviously this is Drupal 7, there's no CCK fields anymore. Um, just hasn't, HAP 6 here hasn't been updated. So I'm going to show comments. And then it gives you an option here of how would you like to see this content. Um, it's a little bit silly to put a teaser display of your content on the node display page unless you had some use case where you wanted people to pay for a subscription service to your website. And if they weren't paid, you want to show them a teaser. And then after they've signed in and paid, then you can show them the whole content. Most of the time, if you're on the full node page, you want the full content to display. All right, so we've added our node content to the left-hand side. 
Um, in the right hand side we want to add some information about our blogger, so maybe their photo or their whole user profile. So we're going to go ahead and add some content and uh, you'll notice there's a, a user option here. So under user we don't have anything available because we haven't added any information about any particular user here. So under node we've got like the author name, which I think is just called author. This is something that comes when Drupal 7 loads a node. You know who created it, so it'll load like the theme username function and load that. But it's not our profile. It's not all of the information we want about our uh, author. So we're going to go ahead and close this window. Um, save this, just you know, so always good to save stuff. And then under um, uh, see, this is not where I want to be. Under so we're going to go back to the page manager interface and we're going to try and add a relationship. This is a little bit confusing. So views has things called relationships, panels has things called relationships. They're not quite the same thing but what we're basically trying to do is take information we don't know from information we do know in both cases. So what we have here um, that says the context available, we have a bunch of information about our node. Um, we need to add a relationship between this node and its author. So under relationships, I can go to user from node. You'll see this is a very common thing people want to do, so it's provided here. Um, you can add your own too, but we can talk about that later. And add the relationship. So it'll say, okay, which node? Well, obviously the one I'm looking at. Uh, what do you want to call it? I'm going to call it something a little bit more useful like author. And then it says, what do you want to call it? Keyword. This is just for your own sanity. User is going to be fine for me, so I'll leave it there. And so now we have a relationship for author, user on node. So this should give us a second context available. So now we have all of the information about the author here also. So if we go back to the content display where we're adding stuff into the sidebar, click on the cogwheel and click add content, we should now have a bunch more stuff available under user. So this is all of the stuff that Drupal knows about that user. For example, the user profile information is also available right here. So if I click finish, update and save, we should be able to look at a blog post. So actually I'm not sure which of those are blog posts, so we're going to go here and grab a blog. Uh, which one? And we should have a giant blog display on the left, the fancy develop generated image, and some content on the right with our user and how long they've been there, you know, standard user profile information. Yay! No? All right. All right. Next task. Um, so we've now created a, a page for a blogger. Um, if we wanted to do exactly the same thing for an event, it's the same process here. This does not actually have an author context provided, but you could do something like um, if you had, I don't know, you were offering trainings, and all of your trainings were offered in one of eight locations. You could have that location be another node where you're like, this is a facility where we train. And you could do exactly the same thing by adding the event information on one side and then the referenced node information on the other side by building that relationship in. Um, my demo site, I don't have that kind of relationship, so we'll just really quickly walk through adding a second variant so you can see what that looks like. Um, we're going to skip the location plus map step here on the sidebar. So back to structure pages. And we're still editing the node template because we're changing the way nodes look. But now we have one variant here. It's called blog. We're going to add a second variant for events. So again, the add variant button at the top. We're going to call this one event. Uh, we're going to add a selection rule because we still want it to apply only the event content type. Under uh, selection criteria, we're going to choose node type. We're going to select event. And then if we go back and look at our two column layouts, you'll notice our two column layout from before isn't actually here, right? We built one and it's not here. So what I'm going to do, um, I'm just going to choose a one column layout with nothing in it for now, but I'm going to go back and edit that other layout. So really quickly, we'll just create this variant so we can come back to it later. But if we go back to our blog content type and look at its layout, you might have noticed this um, before. There's this button here that says reuse layout. So 
in the real world, if I was going to build this on an actual website, what I would have done is built one prototype, showed it to the client, said, is this what you want? They would have said yes. And then I would have written my own HTML and CSS to create this layout rather than using this layout builder thing. And there's a couple reasons for that. Um, number one, anytime you're saving information in a database, when you can be reading a file from disk, it's slow. Um, and I don't like to build anything into my website that I know is unnecessarily slow. So if you can have a HTML template, that's really fast to read that from disk, especially if you're using APC. It's just, here's your file, no problem. Um, what we're doing here is not even just saving like configurations. There's like a bunch of calculation that has to go on. It's like, where did you drag that thing to? What value is saved in the database? How do I write the CSS file to put it exactly where you want? It's just a messy process to build a layout using a drag and dropper. So it's really cool for rapid prototyping because you can build anything you want really fast. But in the real world, as soon as the client signs off on that, um, I know most front end developers would be like, don't show me any markup output by panels. And this is just another place where you can make your own nice, pretty layout at the end. Um, but people need it. Here's a reuse layout button. So in this case, we're going to take our previous layout that we created. We're going to give it a title, something like uh, right sidebar or two call, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and here's the category. So if we want this two column layout to appear in the same category that was on the little drop down for two column layouts, you can. Uh, but you've got to get it exactly right, which I think is columns, colon, space, two. If you forget the colon or the space or something, it'll add a new category. Um, so we'll see if that uh, is going to work. All right. So we've tried to reuse that layout. We'll go back to event. We're going to choose a layout. Let's see here. Columns, colon, space, two. And we should have a two column right sidebar. Now, does anyone notice anything wrong with this picture? There's a picture there. And it is not a two column right sidebar picture. This is really frustrating. I have, there's an issue against panels. That we're trying to fix it. Um, or Earl's like, fine, make me a picture that's better. And then like none of the people in the issue can know how to make pictures. So we're like, uh, OK, maybe someone here knows how to make a picture. Anyway, so it's going to show you this picture for every single layout you've built using a flexible layout tool. So if you have like eight custom layouts, they're all going to look exactly the same. And the only way you can tell them apart is this little tiny bit of descriptive text at the bottom. Um, when we get to the end, if there's time, which there might not be, um, I can show you what a custom layout looks, it looks like, and you can add your own icons and like make them match your website design, and it's really fun. Um, but we'll see that might may not get there. Okay. <sighs> so uh, if you change layouts in panels, it'll ask you, uh, okay, well, we're changing from one layout to the other one. Where do you want me to move your stuff from? So you can drag stuff from one region and drop them into another. In this case, we didn't actually have any stuff, so it's asking us where do we want to move our stuff, but it's not there. Um, but uh, you can, if, it's, if you have to move it, you'll notice it's pretty cool. All right, so we're going back to content. Um, we can add some stuff into the center column. Again, this is just our node. So under node, we're going to choose node content, uh, full node. We're going to uncheck this link box. Um, we're going to leave the extras. OK, right sidebar. Um, and this is a case where we could add. Uh, you'll notice that this is not tokens. <coughs> Uh, this is the uh, event type node, so the fields that are available here are different than the fields that were available on the previous node type. So if I want to do something here like add the date field separately on one sidebar as opposed to the other one, you can do that. You can choose like, uh, I don't know, you can either override the title, you can use the um, label from the field settings if you wanted, you can control that here. Um, you can choose a formatter that's different than your field settings formatter. Um, all of that crazy stuff that you control through field UI is also mushed into your panels interface. So it's messy, but everything you could ever possibly want to do is possible. Um, okay, so we've added a field. Now one thing you'll notice if we go and look at an event node is that we're gonna have uh, the date on the right-hand sidebar where we wanted it, as well as in the left-hand side. So there's a couple of different ways you can solve this. You can either add like every field individually onto your node layout. Um, I don't like to do that because I think that in the future someone will add a field to my content type and if it doesn't display on the page then that's bad. I want it to be there automatically. So instead what I do is I every time I display an individual field separately, I pull it out of the node display. And I do that using field UI. So um, yay, structure, content type, event, manage field, the display. And so here you have the display of date information so we can just say, you know, don't show me a date. Save. And then if you go back to your node display, your date won't show 
in your full node view, and your uh, it will show in the sidebar. Um, another, if you really like view modes, you can create a view mode that's like, this is what my node looks like in its panel. Or you can have like a left sidebar view mode and a right sidebar view mode and group the stuff together. There's like lots of different ways you can, anything you want is possible. All right, so running out of time. Next one. Um, so user profile page, this is like the worst page in Drupal um, by default. You can obviously rearrange this to look however you want it to. Um, it works exactly the same as a node. There's a context provided in Page Manager. Uh, user, user, right? If you enable this, you can override it. Define your um, uh, layout, define your content. I think we should skip this one because there's cooler stuff I want to show you. Um, uh, taxonomy term page. Ah, this is really cool too. Okay, we'll do this one really fast. Same thing here where there's a taxonomy term context provided. Um, all the stuff in core is duplicated in, in panel, so if you want to override this too. So we're going to click enable here and do the taxonomy term one. Uh, so taxonomy term, term template edit. Again, no variance. So if you wanted to have your uh, river of news style, this is all the posts in the category, whatever, be different for your vocabularies, you can do that. Um, so if I wanted to leave like the default display for tags, you can do that. But if you want to change it for categories, you can do that. Um, in this case, I'm going to put an add in the top left uh, events only in the top right and then the rest of the articles underneath. So I've got an events content type, I've got an articles content type, and I want those things separated out on my listing page so people can see, oh, here's events that are relevant to San Francisco Bay Area and here's all the articles that are relevant to the San Francisco Bay Area and maybe like here's photo gallery. Like, th people don't really just want a river of all content in a category. So this is a, a good way to split those out. So we're going to get add a variant here in the same way. Still going to add selection criteria. We're going to call this one. I have uh, one vocabulary called category and one called terms. So I'm just adding one here called category so this will match my vocabulary name. Um, we're going to add a check for the vocabulary here and make sure we're using category instead of tags. And then we're going to continue, do the layout. Looks like two columns stacked again to me. Keep going. Okay, um, so in the left hand side, we just had some kind of ad. So I'm going to use a custom piece of content and say this is an ad. Uh, not going to reuse that. Right hand side, events in this category. So I've already created a view um, that shows only events in this category. Uh, it's called term events. So I'm just going to drop that in. And the bottom we have our standard taxonomy term view, oh, which is called term content. And this view has been configured to exclude events. So finish and then save. Okay, so now if I go back to my taxonomy list, find a category and look at it, we should have a list of events at the top right and add at the top left and stuff at the bottom. Now taxonomy is pretty interesting because not only did we override a panel that was provided from page manager to get that context, but I also had to override a view. So the views module provides a view that overrides the default behavior of Drupal, right? So there's a lot of stuff going on here. By default, the taxonomy module provides a page that gives you a river of nodes. Um, then the views module says, hey, people like to change that. Here's an override of that core page that spits out all of these modules. And then the panels module gives you a panel that overrides the views page. So it's a little nuts. Um, the way that I deal with this is I come into the, pan the views interface, enable the view that's provided, and then the only thing you have to change is the page display that the views module provides has a path. And in order to get panels to work, panels needs access to that path. So if you change the path that the view provides, panels then can use the path that core provides. So all I did was change this from taxonomy to taxonomy old. And that also gives me a way to test to make sure the stuff I'm doing in my panel is doing the same thing that the view used to do. And then I need to make sure stuff is actually working. Um, so views also has a special type of display called a content pane that is meant specifically to work with panels. So just how views pages have individual settings that only relate to pages, like a path and a menu, uh, content pane has particular settings that only mean anything to a panel's user interface. So in this case, we have a way to label this view, which is called an admin title. 
um, a category. This relates to the category that's in the side when you add a piece of content to a panel page. And you can create all of your views to match to the kind of things that, that you want them to go with. So in this case, I, I named the category here taxonomy term so that it would appear with all of the other stuff that panels provide for de by default for taxonomy terms. Um, there's also other ways you can think about it if you have, um, depending on what your uh, site administrators or editors are going to be dealing with, you might have 500 views that have to do with news and you want to have them in a group of their own. So if it's a news category or like news recent or news whatever, you can have all of those news stuff together instead of what I did here is group it with taxonomy terms because I wanted all my taxonomy stuff together. So kind of thinking about how people are going to interact with your site means you can customize your panel's user interface to match your user workflow. So uh, it's bad. Panel user interface is bad. You can make it a lot better just by thinking about how people are actually going to be interacting with it, which is pretty cool. There's also some options here that you may or may not have noticed when I was dropping in a views content pane into a panel. Um, you can allow, <coughs> per instance, things to be changed about your view, like whether you want the title to be overridden. This is something that blocks provides, right? When you put a block into a sidebar, it says, what do you want the title to be? Panels can do that too. There's also other things you can override about panel panes, like what if you wanted a different number of items in different places? So if it's in an area where you only have a limited amount of vertical space, you can say, show me three instead of 10. Or if it's in a place where um, you, you wanted to have a more link or you didn't, you can choose that when you're putting it on the panel. And this doesn't actually change the views settings, but every time you use the view, you can do it differently. So if you want to take this list of content and put it in several different places, you can have it different in different places without having to change your view because you've changed it in your panel. Whoa. All right. Um, there's also some other cool stuff. The contextual filters, and this is a little bit confusing too because in Drupal 6, these were called arguments. And so when everything got moved into Drupal 7, half of the interface got changed. So on, on the right-hand side here, it says contextual filters. And in the middle, it says argument because this is the panel part that didn't get updated, but the views part that did. It's the same thing. Um, it's confusing, but it's the same thing. We're going to fix it maybe in the future. Um, so contextual filters, does everyone understand what these are in views land? Okay. Um, this is something that when you put a view into a panel, panels wants to know where do you get that value from. Um, so if you have something that's like taxonomy slash term slash two, two is the value that you need to get into that view. And if you're now saying, I'm going to put the view in the panel, two is, the two is the value that needs to get into the panel. And then the panel needs to pass the value to the view. So it's basically like this handoff of like, I have this number two. And panels is like, I stole it from Drupal. And then views is like, well, I stole it from panels. And then all of your content panes can steal it from panels also because it's available. This is this context, right? It's, it's something that Drupal knows about and then panels knows about and then everything in your panels can know about. Your view is one of those things in your panels that can know about it. So in this case, we have um, a way to configure which arguments are being used. So taxonomy term actually takes two, right? It takes two arguments. The first one is which term, and the second one is the depth. And you can pass both those through. So here is where views is saying, where do I get these arguments from? And you can say, get it from the panel. So this gives you the ability to pass any number of arguments. And your panel can say, well, I'm going to use, you know, the thing on the right is going to use the first argument. The thing on the left is going to use the second argument. And depending on that page, you can make your panel super rich and dynamic. It's crazy. All right. Um, so, we've got two minutes. Um, should I see, what do you guys want to see code? Or do you want to do another example? Okay. Custom layout templates? Anything else? Okay. So we're going to jump to code really quickly. Uh, I thought you might want to see custom layout templates. So it's actually really easy to provide a template to panels. Um, this is a plugin system in panels. There's a new plugin system in Drupal 8 that's kind of like loosely similar because we're doing a lot of stuff similar to how panels did it. Um, so what you just have to do is say, hey, panels, uh, I have a new template. Its title is new column. Its category is two. This is the little icon that matches the rest of my site's theme that indicates what it's going to look like. This is the theme function that gets called. Uh, this is the style sheet that gets added. And these are the regions that are inside it. So it's a lot like an info file for a theme only this is just a PHP array. So it's module speak, I've got this in a module. You can put this in your theme too, I don't recommend it because then when you change your theme, your site will break. Um, so just define a, a plugin just like this, and then you define a template file. So in this case, uh, this looks a lot like the code that panels outputs, HTML purists would be very upset about that, but I just copied it just for example here. 
Um, so I've got a container with a container with more containers inside it, and then there's like you know some content in there somewhere, right? Prints out the name of the region that we defined in our ink file. Then there's a style sheet. It includes all of the styles that dictate the region um, or, or the layout. So there's there's kind of a, a trade-off here where you have to decide how much of your style is married to your layout and how much of your style goes in your theme. And for me it really depends per project where that code lives. Because sometimes when I, um, let me just turn on this module so you can see what it looks like. Um, when I go to put content into the page, I wanna see like this has a gray background or this has a green background so I know which row stuff goes into. So I have a module here called custom panel. So I usually do this for all of my websites where all of the customization, the stuff that I write for panels goes in. And I also can put the panels exports in code in there too, which is kinda handy. So now if I go to my page manager interface and edit, say, some existing content, um, like a blog, if you wanted to change the layout, in the drop down you have a new option here that says new. And here you can have uh, like cute little color coded icons that indicate you know, what the layout will actually look like. So if I change this to this two column layout here instead of the two column layout I had before, it says where do you want my content to go? And you can say, well, let's put the right sidebar content into the right sidebar. And then if you go and look at that, let's see, it was a blog, right? So there should be a, whoop, that didn't work. Did I save it? Oh, that was a page. Skip that, blog entry. Okay, so then you've got this like gray background on the left-hand side. So it really depends on your layouts, like whether you want that style in there, or whether you just wanna say this is left, this is right, um, which is based on site. So, um, No, so the way that I organize my files is inside sites all modules or sites subsite modules or whatever. I usually divide my folders so I have like contributed modules I downloaded from dribble.org. Then I have a folder for all of the custom modules that I wrote myself. That way when it gets around time to upgrade, uh, you know the stuff you can just upgrade via Drupal and the stuff you have to write your own code for to upgrade. And then all of my custom code I put in that folder. So this is code I wrote to control your layout. So I put it in a module I called gen panels in this case for this example. Um, inside the custom folder. And then inside that module, it's just an info file, like your standard module, and then you just define two functions. Um, in this case, we've got one called, you know, this is where my plugins live, and you drop your layout in there. You can copy and paste this from any existing panels module. It's not too scary. In fact, I can even post this code after this so you can see it. Um, and then uh, making sure you have the right version of the C-Tools API. Um, and this, well, I'm running out of time. But, um, so then you have, in here I've got a folder called layouts where all of my layouts for this particular site live. I've got one here called one column layout which had the little blue bar at the top and then I've got new two column layout which is left and right. And then as long as you just drop your code, like your ink file right in here, panels will find it and it'll provide it and load it into your interface for you. So it's really easy to write your own layout. It's just like writing your own template file. Um, there's a couple of other stuff I like to add to all my sites like um, we didn't actually get to this, but uh, for any uh, custom content pane or content pane you've added to any page, there's an option to change the styles. So uh, after you've added a piece of content into a region, there's a cogwheel on the right-hand side that lets you configure that content. Um, one of the options in here is a style, right? So by default, panels renders these things the way it wants. There's a bunch of options, right? If you wanted to render it like a block, there's the system block style that will use the block.tpl.php instead of the panels-pane.tpl.php. Um, you can also say don't put any markup in there at all. I hate panels markup, I'm leaving it out. Um, there's also some options like you know rounded, rounded corners. It's a style sheet that panels adds that adds little rounded corners everywhere. Um, I like to add my own. So if you want a really easy way to change your like title tags, right? If you have a, a landing page that's really important, you don't want it to have a uh, you want to have an H2 instead of an H3 or something, you can do that. Or you have little tiny ones that are important, you have an H5, you want no title at all. I find this much easier than clicking the box that says title override and typing in none in those little alligator black brackets. So I provide my own styles and sometimes they have other you know, colors, this one's blue, this one's red, whatever. Um, and those are also really easy to add. Um, so uh, those you can just drop right in here too and it's just uh, uh, another plugin definition that says hey, you know, this is a style and this is the uh, theme function that you should call, and then here's 
here's the theme function and what it returns. So um, this is more like programmy theme stuff, but you can also provide your own templates. Right? So if you had like here's the H4 version and all it does is print like an H4. Yes. You can, you don't need to. I would not recommend it. Yeah. If you're already using panels and if you're already using context, you should not have panels also. They do they solve the same problems. So you don't need both of them. And if you have both of them, you're just gonna get yourself into a world of hurt with them both trying to do the same thing. Well the most of the text in the lecture uh, in this case I guess the the thing that I showed you on the the binder to play with, that's the primary theme file that I showed you on the left hand side there. But there are some pages that just look like little text files as well. So if you're interested in maybe using some functions that you already have for Just for a single page? Yeah, that's a good one to do. So, yeah. Uh, then, then context can be part of it, but if you're using it from the, the back of the book, then you don't need to. I still would not recommend using context and panels at the same time. I, st I just yeah. think it's like it's too much of this. Like, there's got to be a way you can solve that problem with like right. display suite or something else with context. You still need panels for panelizer. You don't. It comes with C tools, so you, it's still there. It's just a lot of code. You don't need. So this is the thing where, like, in Drupal land, like, you can solve any problem any number of ways, right? And I, I would recommend not solving the same problem two different ways on the same site. It's just architecturally going to be really hard for you a year from now when you're like, time to upgrade to Drupal eight, and you're like, uh, <laughs> just. Uh, no. Um, how about a brain? That's the closest thing I can come No, I don't know. I mean, so I solve every problem with panels because I know panels. I've been using panels for years. I love panels. Every problem I run into that needs a solution that context can provide, panels can do too. Um, it's this kind of thing where, like, you know, um, Display Suite can do what panels can do. Context can do what panels can do. PHP temp contemplate, whatever. All of these things, all of these problems that all of these other modules solve, panels and page manager can do. So for me, it's like less code on my site if I can solve it one way. Um, you might be running into a use case where you're like, maybe the, the tools you have right now can't solve that problem, but there's probably a little tool you can add that can solve the problem that's not as big as panels, page manager, yeah, panelizer. Yeah, I think it's just you just need a smaller tool for that job. Yeah. Or, yeah, you could you could remove context and use panels for everything context is doing. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, so so this is a, so this thing where like it's really easy to get eighty percent of any project done, right? Just like click the pieces together, and the last twenty percent is really hard. And sometimes, like, the last 20% is like, oh, let's just remove the 40%, and then it's only 5% more. Right. Um, I don't know. There's probably an easier way to do it. Yes, over there. <laughs> 